Okay, we're going to have a quick look at two reducing reagents, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminium hydride. So NaBH4 and lithium aluminium hydride, LiAlH4. And they both contain a group 1 and a group 3 uh, element and four hydrogens. And if you know your oxidation numbers, you know that that hydrogen will have an oxidation number of minus 1, so it's a hydride. So, we're going to look at how these behave or how these react with carbonyl containing compounds. And a carbonyl is carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So we know lots of functional groups that contain carbonyls. So they include aldehydes, ketones, esters, carboxylic acids, amides, and there are more, like anhydrides and acid chlorides, but we're not going to worry about those for now. So the first question is, well, if we do reduce these, what do we get? And we're usually, or we're always going to reduce these using these reducing reagents if they do work, so that you end up with a single carbon heteroatom bond. So either a single carbon oxygen bond in these four cases, or a single carbon nitrogen bond in these cases. So if you reduce an aldehyde, you are going to get a primary alcohol. If you reduce a ketone, you are going to get a secondary alcohol. If you reduce an ester, you are going to get a primary alcohol. So there are any number of possible substituents here. You'll get a primary alcohol from the carboxylate side, and you'll get whatever the other alcohol was from the other half of the ester. If you reduce a carboxylic acid, well, you'll be unsurprised given what happened here. All you get is the primary alcohol. And if you reduce an amide, you end up with an amine. So, these are the, re the reaction products. These are quite different in how they behave. If you're handling these in the lab, sodium borohydride is reasonably safe to handle. It's soluble in water. It's in fact quite stable if the water is uh, basic, pH 10. It'll be stable for quite a, reason, quite a long time. Uh, lithium aluminium on the hydride, on the other hand, reacts violently with water, producing hydrogen gas and spontaneously bursts into flame. So these are two very different things. And that also gives you a hint about which one is going to be more reactive when it comes to doing the reduction reaction. So sodium borohydride, reduces aldehydes and ketones quite well, uh, quite quickly, and will very slowly reduce esters if you uh, heat it for quite, uh, quite a while. Lithium aluminium hydride, on the other hand, will reduce all of these compounds, although it's much faster at reducing aldehydes, then ketones, then esters, then carboxylic acids, although there are better ways to do that, and amides. So you can draw a line through this here and say, Sodium borohydride will selectively reduce these, and then lithium aluminium hydride will reduce all of them. This also brings us to the term chemoselective. So, chemoselective So, chemoselective is a reagent that will react selectively with one functional group and not another. An example would be this. If we took the following molecule here, so supposing we took this molecule, which contains both an ester and a ketone. If we treat it with sodium borohydride, we expect it to react chemoselectively and it will reduce only the ketone and not the ester, in which case we would end up with the ester on one, hand, one end and the alcohol on the other hand. On the other hand, if we were to treat that with sodium, sorry, with lithium aluminium hydride, we'd expect both to be reduced. So if we treat it with lithium aluminium hydride, we expect the alcohol formed here and we also expect the alcohol formed at the other end if we use lithium aluminium hydride. 
And that's an example of chemoselectivity. The next thing I want to do is have a quick look at the uh, conditions that you use for sodium borohydride reductions and the conditions that are used for lithium aluminium hydride reductions. So let's start off with sodium borohydride and let's take our aldehyde. So we'll make this any aldehyde, it doesn't matter what it is. And if you treat this aldehyde uh, in reducing conditions with sodium borohydride, then you're going to use sodium borohydride and usually you'll do it in an alcohol solvent, a protic solvent, methanol will do nicely. The borohydride, BH4, so that's four sigma bonds to an sp3 hybridized boron, which has a charge of minus one because it's a group three element and it's got four uh, bonds to it, so net charge of minus one. And there's a sodium atom dissociated floating around in solution. And so these hydrogens are somewhat nucleophilic and within this reaction I'm going to draw in a methanol in a convenient place for the mechanism. So the hydride being a nucleophile can attack the carbonyl and when it attacks the carbonyl, as you've seen many times before, nucleophile attacks the carbonyl electrophile, we have to break the carbon oxygen double bond and it's going to deprotonate the methanol in solution. It's going to get a hydrogen from the methanol. And let's have a quick look at what we're left with. So let's draw out everything exactly as it was, except for the things that we have moved. The spectator sodium is down there. So what did we do? We had a borohydride here. It's now lost that pair of electrons, so boron is neutral. This pair of electrons got moved into a new carbon-hydrogen bond. This pair of electrons got moved up onto the oxygen and then deprotonated the local methanol, or the most adjacent, the close-by methanol. And the methanol itself is now a methoxide, so OCH3 with a negative charge on the oxygen. The methoxide will almost immediately attack the borane because this now has an empty uh, p orbital and this has a negative charge. So that's going to attack and what you're going to end up with is our primary alcohol has been produced. So we still have our primary alcohol. That's our product done. But we also have our now methoxy borohydride. So we now have sodium methoxy borohydride and this can actually continue to reduce. So there's no reason that this couldn't have a nucleophilic hydrogen attack another carbonyl. And so in theory you only need one of these for every four carbonyls that you want to reduce. In practice, for the sake of uh, getting your reaction to convert as far as possible, you'd use an excess of borohydride. But in theory, if you put in one of these, it's capable of reducing four carbonyls. So that's the borohydride uh, mechanism. Now let's look at lithium aluminium hydride. And I'm gonna kill uh, two mechanisms in one here, because I'm gonna look at lithium aluminium hydride reducing, uh, in this case, methyl acetate. So lithium aluminium hydride, in some senses, not too dissimilar to sodium borohydride, but in practice, far more reactive in this case, when we do our reaction, we're going to do it in some non-protic solvent, so some solvent that can't react with these really reactive hydrides. So it might be done in THF or something like that, but it's going to be done in some non-reactive solvent. So our lithium spectator ion is going to be around as well. And again, I'm going to draw these out in convenient positions that will make drawing the mechanism easier rather than those that would reflect how they might be associated in solution. But our hydride can again attack the carbonyl, and when we attack this carbonyl, it can coordinate to the lithium, or it can form an ionic oxygen-lithium bond. So this pair of electrons is going to form a new hydrogen-carbon bond, and this pair of electrons is going to form an ionic oxygen-lithium bond. What's that going to look like? Well, 
Again, dry out everything exactly as it was, except for the things that you've moved. And we have moved that pair of electrons here, so the negative charge is gone from the aluminium. We've taken them, we've given them to the oxygen, and the oxygen is ionically bonded to the lithium. This, however, is a much better uh, Lewis acid than the lithium is. It's a much, uh, uh, it's capable of forming a much stronger bond to the oxygen than the lithium is. And so that's exactly what will happen. The aluminium will co coordinate to that oxygen very quickly. So the oxygen will donate its lone pair to the aluminium. And we'll now have something that looks like this. So our aluminium is back having a negative charge and our lithium is back to being a spectator ion. What's going to happen next? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that you might recognize this kind of uh, situation here from other times that we've attacked carbon ions that have leaving groups on them. We formed a tetrahedral intermediate. So the first thing that's going to happen before this reaction proceeds any further is that this is going to reform the carbon oxygen double bond and it's going to kick out a leaving group. But I've kind of drawn this in an unfortunate way, so I'm going to redraw this down here. So this is just a redrawing of this. If we want to reform that, at the same time, the aluminium can take away this ethoxide, and the aluminium isn't going to have to lose out on having its uh, fourth orbital filled, or its fourth valence orbital. So if we do that, what are our products going to be? Well again, draw everything out, exactly as it was, except for the bonds that have arrows going from them. That's everything exactly as it was. And we're going to take that pair of electrons there. Sorry, I'll remember to put in my negative charge. We're going to take this pair of electrons here and reform the carbon-oxygen double bond. We're going to take that pair of electrons there and form aluminium-oxygen bond and we still have our methoxy aluminium hydride. Now, what have we made? Well, again, my bond angles aren't so good, so let me redraw that. Might look better like that. We have made an aldehyde. And if you remember from not too long ago, an aldehyde is much more reactive than an ester. So this is very rapidly going to be reduced by either one of these aluminium hydrides or another equivalent of aluminium hydride entering into the reaction. But either way, this aldehyde is not going to last any length of time. So I'm going to draw in my lithium spectator ion down here, and I'm going to show nucleophilic attack, and we're going to break the carbon oxygen double bond and create a new ionic oxygen lithium bond. And you can see this is quite similar to what just happened, both in this step here and with sodium borohydride. So now we've produced, or we've nearly produced, our primary alcohol. Uh, we also have our aluminium, which now only has two hydrogens still attached, still has the methoxy. And again, as with up here, this is going to coordinate in favour of an ionic bond with the lithium. And the only way that you're going to get your alcohol back is at the end of the reaction, you're going to have to add in dilute acid. So if you do this reaction, you have to be cautious about adding in your water or your acid, because obviously there may be some hydride left over. But if you have it in controlled conditions at a low temperature, then you can add in your dilute acid and recover your alcohol. So. Before we go adding in the acid, just to draw out the final uh, structure before acidic workup. So you have lithium as a spectator ion and you have your aluminium bound to your oxygen. And only when you add in your H3O plus will you finally get your alcohol. It's worth also noting that you're going to release 
this alcohol too, because it's also bound to the aluminium. So the H3O plus, or the aqueous acid, isn't just going to release the ethanol, as we've drawn it here, it's also going to release the methanol. And they are our final products. Okay, I know that's been a relatively long video, but I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, post them below, uh, or send me an email or ask on Moodle. That's all for now. Bye.